So to set up all the examples for the course, we're going to set up your development environment on AWS. We're going to create um, or you're going to access an existing AWS account that you already have, and then you're going to grant uh, management uh, per permission. Go to uh, the AWS, the Amazon, get a free account. Um, if you don't have that account, you choose that you are a new user. Otherwise, you can actually just log in with your credentials. Um, and then once you've completed this registration process, uh, you're going to be sent an email uh, with fur further instructions. Um, and then once you have access to AWS, you can then set up um, your identity access management. At least check this prior to setting up your development environment. So ideally, you want to have administrative access to your AWS account. Um, so if you don't have kind of permissions you're going to need are going to be uh, access to what you see here, which is uh, Amazon CloudWatch, SNS, SQS, S3, uh, Cloud9, and the rest uh, that's on this list. Um, and if you want more information, Essentially, what you want to do is set up these permissions uh, and then assign these permissions to a group and then assign the group um, to the user that, you, uh, that you're logging in, the I am. Cloud-based IDE that's provided by AWS. If you want to use your own IDE, you can do so, um, but you're going to need to modify the instructions that I go through. Uh, throughout this live lesson. Um, you're able to use an AWS service, but the other reason is in files, uh, and then you're able to go through this course much more efficiently. Cloud9, so we'll go to the Cloud9 console uh, in AWS. And the first thing we're going to do, I already have an environment set up, so we're going to walk through instructions that you'll go through um, as you create an environment. So you go to the Cloud9 console, and you click on Create Environment, and we'll give it a... If anyone else in my organization uh, sees it, they'll see that I'm the one using it. Um, for all resources later on. So then I click, I can say what this is, you know, this is, you know, my, this is my ID or whatever instructions you want others to see if that, um, if this ID is used by others in the environment you want to share with others, things like that. So we get into the environment settings, and here we're going to use most of the defaults that are provided with, uh, with Cloud9. I'll talk about some of the other options as well. And so the first thing we'll do is we're going to create a new in, uh, instance uh, for your environment. Cloud. Um, and so you have another option where you can run it as a remote server uh, via SSH. The next option is the instance type. We're going to use the T2 micro. We don't need anything more uh, uh, larger than that. We don't need a small or large of the, uh, some of the other instance types. So we're going to use the T2 micro. Um, and then in terms of the platform, we're going to be using Amazon Linux throughout this course. This other uh, setting is interesting. It's a cost-saving setting. Um, we're going to use the default. But what happens is because it's using EC2 under the hood, uh, when you're no longer using the IDE, so So you're no longer paying uh, for the use of that instance other than the, uh, the underlying storage. And so, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to use all the defaults. Um, it actually sets up a Denny and Access Management role uh, for you uh, that's associated with your IDE. You can also configure uh, advanced network settings, run it in a specific VPC. We're going to skip all that and go to the next step.
the description, the environment type, and so forth. Um, and then we're going to. It's going to take a couple minutes for it to spin up uh, your environment because it's going to be launching an EC2 instance. Uh, and so we'll make it wait a few minutes and then we'll be able to access our IDE. Okay, so you can see that my Cloud9 environment has been spun up. Um, I have the, the different files or pages on the, in the top panel. And then I have a terminal uh, that's been set up in the, the bottom panel. You can see I can add files, terminals, I can actually do that on both sides, but this is the default that it's set up as. I can also click on uh, the settings icon here, and I can go through and color, my background color. I can change uh, the different themes uh, for, you know, for the user interface. We'll create a working area uh, in Cloud9. We're going to be using this working area uh, throughout the course. And so I'm just going to make a directory so I can just copy this right from the instructions. And I'll go into my environment. Uh, and you can see that it's created a Uh, for a couple of lessons, a couple of sub-lessons. Uh, in the course, we're, we'll be creating some uh, custom config rules, which we'll be learning about. And so we're going to configure Python to run on Cloud9. And so we'll run through th these instructions. We're going to update uh, the Yum repository, the package repository uh, that's being used in this environment. And so we'll run this uh, command. the uh, AWS network, uh, so you get a lot of speed on that. So the connection, um, your local connection gets you to the browser, but back the uh, version. So we're, we're already running uh, 368, but if you're not running 368, depending on the environment that you, maybe you already have a Cloud9 environment set up, uh, you might run through some of these additional instructions as well. Uh, so there's nothing to do because we already have that environment installed, and so we can just also double check the environment. We're going to be using uh, PIP, uh, which is um, a package manager for So we'll download that. Uh, And then here we're downloading. We're going to CD back to just kind of sort of the base. We're going to open up a bash profile. And the reason we're doing this is just so that when we type Python, uh, that we get access to that uh, within our environment. And so we're using Vim, so I just typed uh, I uh, to insert. And then I'm just going to put uh, an export for the path, and then I'm going to right quit. I'm going to save the file, the, the bash profile, and then I'm going to source it just so so that we can use this um, in the lessons of the course. So in this course, we're going to be using AWS code 200 or so uh, AWS services that are available. Source files that are going to be used to run uh, the continuous compliance, run the, the compliance as a part of a deployment pipeline. Um, and so what we're going to do is actually just set up a, um, an empty repository to start things off that we're going to be referring to uh, later on in the course. Uh, the other note here, uh, and I do make a in Cloud9, as I mentioned, but also in this course, I'm using the US East 1 region. Uh, it's one of 20 or so uh, AWS regions that are provided. Uh, you can use this actually 
AWS regions. But just so you know, uh, most of the links go to US East 1. You can adapt it to, to, to use uh, other regions as well. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to open up the code commit console. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a name, and so we're going to give it uh, CCOA. We're just going to preface that that way, you know, as I mentioned, we can uh, find these uh, resources later on. This is my Git repo for, and, and then I click Create. And now a code commit repository has been created. So now I'm going to type in a few commands that's going to configure um, my Git command line um, in Cloud9. And one of these commands is so that we can use HTTP because we're going to be uh, Git cloning through HTTPS. Uh, we're also going to be configuring the username uh, and email address and, and other uh, requirements uh, for uh, These steps, you might get a 403 error where um, it's not able to get access to a repository. So we're going to run through these commands. You'll type in the username. Okay, so now that we have that configured, then we're going to generate uh, some HTTPS Git credentials uh, for AWS code commit. And we do that uh, in the IAM console. And so we'll go to the uh, that we might be using. So um, if I was using this username, I could then scroll down um, and I a new username and password. I'm going to be using that if I need This um, is the username and password combination that I'll be using. So I can download these credentials. Uh, you just want to keep that in uh, a safe place on your computer or some other location um, that you need to access. Uh, your username and password for Git. So now we're going to do a, now that we've gone through those steps, we're going to do a Git clone test. Um, and so we're going to, Git clone is essentially downloading all the files. It's cloning that repository, um, and in this case, uh, in your local environment. So we'll go back. We're going to clone that repository that we just created. And it mentions that, you, that we've uh, cloned an empty repository. That's perfectly okay. That's what we expect. There are no files uh, in that repository. We're going to be adding files um, throughout this live lesson. Um, so S3 is the simple storage service. Uh, you can store. Um, and we're going to be storing our automation. In other cases, we're going to manually create a bucket like we're doing here, and we're going to store files uh, in that directory. Run this command. Um, one, of the, um, one of the things to keep in mind when it comes to S3 is that you need to have globally unique resource naming. The, the, each S3 bucket is associated with an AWS region, but the actual name needs to be globally unique, uh, meaning you know, no, no other uh, person in the world can have created that particular bucket. Um, and so what we're going to do um, is we're going to AWS CLI, and we're going to run a command, AWS S3. Automatically, uh, through this command, get your AWS account ID. So that should make it unique. Um, so we're going to run this command. 
and it makes will have CCOA dash whatever your account ID uh, that you're running in. And so we'll be using that whenever I'm referring to about this course. Uh, this is the bucket uh, that I'm, I'll be referring to. There are a couple of optional uh, tasks that you can go through um, in this particular section. Uh, we're not going to go through it in the course, but you'll this uh, AWS Compliance Workshop repository. You can do so. This is a public repository, um, and so you can. And I'll just, I'm not going to go through all the steps, but just so you know that you can just click on fork um, for that repository and then you have uh, your own edits, your own changes, and you want to do some experimentation or what have you, then you're able to do that. Um, by um, you want to create an OAuth token so that you can um, access that uh, through the, uh, through the uh, Git credentials doing that and giving yourself or giving that repository the what you might do um, is save off your username um, and password of your of your git credentials in the last section I just really want to uh, make a note of for right now we'll, we'll continue to go back to it uh, throughout this course, and that is uh, cleaning up your resources. And so you can do this, uh, for the most part, you can do this throughout all the, the different lessons. So say you go through lesson one and you want to clean up the resources. You can wait, or you can wait until the very end. But these are just some tips. The resources that are generated as a part of this course, so you're not paying for them. Uh, while you're not using them. And so here are some links and some example commands uh, that that throughout the course or as you're just simply looking at the Git repository in the wiki, uh, you'll be able to get direct access to some of these commands to, uh, to clean out your resources. And so I make the final note here um, that if uh, you're using a, re you can use a region other than uh, USD1, uh, but all the examples are based on USD1. Um, but just make the modifications. If you see there's a link that goes out to that region, uh, you can make the modifications and choose a different region.